Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, I want to go ahead and continue talking about strings, but just with a few little additional details that might be useful to programmers. After all, D is a language that's used widely all over the world, so we should know a little bit about some things like Unicode, for instance, and just how D handles it. So let me just give you a brief introduction to this topic here, and let's go ahead and take a look at string here. And this is probably best looked at through an example of just some of the capabilities that are built into the language. Again, a really nice thing that D provides so we don't have to wrestle with it or install a lot of external libraries. So with strings here, the first thing that I want to go ahead and show you is what if you just want to print out a raw string? Well, D, like some other languages like C Sharp and C++ and so on, allow you to just put an R in front and then you don't have to end the quote here and it'll actually just print out this message as is. Now, as you can notice when I highlight over this in my editor here, we're also going to get all these spaces here. So we do have to be a little bit careful with this feature, or maybe we could just move this down to another line here. Let's just go ahead and run this for now. And let me go ahead and comment out uh, the other lines here so we don't get too confused and see what this raw output is. You can go ahead and see that those spaces are preserved. So what could we do here? Well, we could go ahead and try to... Let's see if I just move this around here. Let's see what happens. Do we get our raw string? Well, yep, we still do. So again, we could uh, just continue moving things here to the start of the line here uh, if we wanted, if that was our intent here. Now that might look a little bit sloppy in our actual code here. So oftentimes what folks will also do uh, in D is just surround things in quotes like such, and then just use the same append operator that we saw here rerun it, and then you'll have our line here. Now you'll notice though that this isn't quite looking right here. I've got these weird sort of backslashes here. Now usually when you see these backslashes, that means that we are escaping some symbol. And the one that we're trying to escape here is Unicode. So what is Unicode? Well, Unicode are those other characters or the rest of the characters that we might have representing other different alphabets beyond just the sort of 26 letters in the sort of English alphabet. Okay, so here's some example of some codes and the Unicode that you would have to represent this symbol when you want to print it out on a terminal or some sort of window. So you can look up these tables pretty much anywhere uh, online and get these symbols. So you'll see slash U and then the according escape sequence here. Now, you can also have a escape sequence that might be eight characters, the sort of HTML ones that's also allowed in D as well. So let's go ahead and compare this uh, raw string that we're printing off with the Unicode one when we properly escape this and aren't treating this as a raw string with R. And we'll go ahead and just print out the Unicode here. And you can see here that we have our string. Again, it's preserving on multiple lines, so we might want to you know, do something interesting with this, uh, like this solution here, and just append each line together. But you can see the phrase, I have five euros and two yen in my pocket. Um, so I guess I'm not very rich. <laughs> but you get the idea of how we can print out some different characters. And that's also to say that D can represent different alphabets and these types of things with wide characters, which is represented with a W string as well. So go ahead and bring in one more resource here. These are how we can delimit our strings here uh, if we would like. And let me go ahead and get you to the right spot here. Here we are to show you that we could put a postfix uh, symbol here for C, W, or D, depending on how we want to treat our string. Now, if you're just starting programming, no worries. You don't really have to worry about this, and you can just stick to simple phrases like hello. But if you have been doing some programming for a while, or this has been a pain point working with Unicode, uh, D has pretty good support. So you might look at this, and then, of course, these escape sequences for the Unicode characters, as I mentioned, are here with the backslash and U. Okay. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about, and I'll keep this video relatively short, is that once we are using these Unicord, Unicode uh, characters, we do have to be a little bit careful. So let's just go ahead and see what the length of one of these Unicode characters is. So if I go ahead and run this, well, that doesn't look quite right to me here. I'm really just printing out uh, or storing this one symbol here, which happens to be the euro sign. So, you know, we would probably just count this as one character if we were counting it in a textbook, reading it in print. But for some reason, we get three here. 
And that's sort of a more advanced discussion, probably for a longer video, if you're interested in the future about how Unicode actually puts things together and this idea of code points and how those are counted. Uh, but that's just something to be aware of in case you are uh, working in different languages or multiple languages or inserting symbols into your strings. So again, just something to be aware of and to think about when representing your actual strings. Again, you also would have to think about uh, things like uh, if you're using wide strings, which might be two bytes um, per to represent one character, for instance. So again, just a few things to consider with string, and I wanted to make sure that we had a resource for this. So with that said, though, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Just a short one continuing on strings. Again, D has a lot of power built into the standard library and into the language for working with strings, and I think it gets most of the design decisions right here. So feel free to explore those resources. I hope that'll help you with your D programming. And with that said, folks, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.